This comment right here has made me work on a video that I thought would just take a week to make, and it's been well over a month now. The answer is yes, but I think the question that's really at hand is how? Up until now, my experience with astrophotography has been limited. I've taken a nice picture here and there on a dark night, but I've never really known exactly what I was doing. All I've known is that with the help of a low aperture, a high ISO and a quick shutter speed to match, I can get a passable image. But as for the one step plus here, well, everything gets flipped right upside down. Oh, wrong upside down. To begin with, the lowest aperture on this camera is f12, but it's minimum aperture that actually gives focus to infinity, which is kind of important when you're shooting the stars, is f32. As for ISO, Polaroid eye type film, black and white and in colour is rated at 640, and those two things put together means that astrophotography on the One Step Plus isn't really an easy thing, especially when you consider exposure length. And to figure out those exposure lengths, um, we're going to have to do some maths. So I've got to figure out my exposure without a light meter in a way. And the way I'm going to do that is by shooting a shot at f2 on my 5D at ISO 640, and then figure out what that would be for f12. And to do that, you've got to understand how f-stops work mathematically. And I was going to film a whole section where I went through the maths of how f-stops works and how I calculated my results, but uh, then I realized how boring that would be, so. If we skip all that, basically what matters is that if I'm shooting at any given aperture on my one step plus, I just have to multiply the exposure length that I get metering on my 5D by a factor and then I get my exposure length for the one step plus. And in the end, that makes it a nice and easy thing to do my calculations whilst shooting. So it's now 11 p.m. and I'm out the front of my house and I'm ready to take some pictures with the Polaroid. I took my preview shot with my F2 lens on my 5D and I got this image with a 30 second exposure. So I did the maths and that will be an 18 minute exposure on the Polaroid. The image is not really gonna be of the stars staying still. The stars will be a streak rather than, you know, still. To begin with, I didn't really know how long exposures worked on the One Step Plus. I'd completely forgotten how to use the app and I ended up with this one minute exposure, which was really just a wasted shot. But eventually I, I figured it out again and I ended up with this image. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I had a suspicion it wouldn't work. You know what? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I'm gonna leave it for quite a while and see what happens. Hopefully it works out. The shot worked, but only because I left it for about three times longer than what my calculations had called for. Which I then, because it was so late at night and I was exhausted, I completely forgot about after, which was a mistake. It's a big mistake. But still, with my single proof of concept in hand, I went on, perhaps naively, maybe definitely naively, to organize a trip on the next new moon to the middle of nowhere with a good friend of mine, expecting to get some brilliant astrophotography shots in what I thought to be the most ideal conditions. Oh. oh god. So that's what the next two shots from the cartridge look like. It's either that I stuffed up the maths or another reason I'm not quite sure. So obviously it didn't work. As you already know, I had forgotten why my proof of concept had worked, but it wasn't just that. I just didn't know what I was doing. I was truly out of my depth. And usually what I do when I find myself in this kind of situation is I get in touch with someone who knows better than me, who's had the experience before, but no one I knew had ever been foolish enough to try astrophotography on this bloody camera system. So I scoured the internet and eventually came across a fellow from New Jersey in the United States by the name of Dan, who takes amazing astro polaroid shots these images speak for themselves really if you just look at his instagram he's an astro photographer and he is a lot more qualified than i am and he was exactly who i needed to talk to and he graciously gave some of his time in an interview conversation kind of thing it's very disjointed because really i called him just to figure out what i was doing wrong and how to shoot better but what i'm about to show you is just some of the highlights or some of the main points that really helped me figure out what i was doing wrong so film as it is 
is much more limiting in regards to doing astrophotography in a dark sky because it takes a lot more effort to acquire enough photons to get a good enough exposure. Because most of my struggle so far had been with metering, a key thing that came up in my conversation with Dan was this thing called reciprocity failure, which up until now I had never heard of. Which when simplified greatly basically means that at longer exposure lengths the relationship between shutter speed and the sensitivity of the film is no longer reciprocal. Film is just less responsive at lower light levels. And because all my prior low light experience had been with digital cameras combined with the fact that I was just unaware of the concept and hadn't considered for it, Dan instead suggested that if you want to go to a dark sky to get some more stars I actually think shooting with the moon might help too. Also try doing some color believe it or not because i think that the moon will light the sky up blue and the luminosity of that blue might show up a little bit better on the color film than the black and white even though the black and white chemistry is a little bit more sensitive together with that he also mentioned this i literally don't meet her which at first wasn't really a fun thing to hear given all the effort that i'd put in and all my calculations which i didn't even include in this video in the end it just pointed out in a straight way that my approach was all wrong. And he continued on by explaining what he does instead of metering, which is basically just trial and error, which funnily enough, in usual circumstance, that is what I preach for photography and filmmaking. Trial and error is the go, but probably because Polaroid is so expensive and maybe because I just wanted to get this video done with, I wasn't thinking about it in the way that I usually do. I, I really struggled to come up with solutions that now in retrospect I know to be super simple. All I had to do to get an exposure was just increase my exposure length and lower my aperture. But because of that mindset, I just couldn't figure it out. You don't need to put too much thought into metering because you're, you're almost guaranteed to not overexpose before you get to like some level of exposure where you think you're gonna overexpose. Instead, you're actually not gonna overexpose. The reciprocity failure is gonna kick in, so. Following that, the next thing that he brought up that pointed out my um, my incorrect approach was the whole idea of precision. Polaroid isn't precise. Shooting Polaroid on the One Step Plus is not a high fidelity kind of thing. But still, there I was ignoring the advice that I even gave at this start of the video about shooting at the lowest possible aperture. Instead, I was shooting at just ludicrously high apertures, trying to achieve this precision that's just impossible. But still, even after showing me that I was making some really silly mistakes, Dan reminded me that failure is a part of learning with photography. Here's the thing. These are my successful photos. Check this out. These are all failures here. This is all failures. These are all failures. I'm on track then, as far as the hit rate goes. <laughs> We're on the same page. <laughs> if you just are persistent and be trying that result, I feel like that in and of itself is like a learning experience, you know, because it really forces you to just keep getting at it until like you get, you know, something that is like, wow, like I can't believe that came out of that camera. Thank you very much. Sweet. Thank you, everybody. Take care. You too. Wow. My face in this moment, right at the end of the call, really says it all. I was ready to go out and shoot again, go out and try at least one more time with one more cartridge to see what I could shoot. So here I am now equipped with Dan's knowledge and a color cartridge in my One Step Plus. I'm gonna take my time and shoot this cartridge over the next few nights and try my best to ignore all my digital knowledge and just get some good images. And this all begins with a two hour and eight minute exposure, which is hard for you to see on camera. But the scan that you're seeing now shows the image well. It's very subtle, but it's definitely my best shot so far because of that longer exposure time. I've just finished my second night of shooting and I, I took two pictures and the first was already me spicing things up. I tried a double exposure kind of method. It's not really a double exposure, but it is. And the first five minutes of this exposure was spent kind of looking at the view of the dying light right after sunset. And the next one hour and 55 minutes was spent looking up at the stars. Though unfortunately, as you can see, or as you can't see, uh, there's no stars, but it's still a nice image, pretty colors. I'm quite happy with it. But as for the second image, I'm even more happy with that one. It was three hour exposure at F32 again. And it's such a lovely little shot of Mars. It's just a streak, but somehow I got it to be horizontal and level with the camera. This one is my new favorite, hands down. It's um, 
It's pretty awesome. Another night and yet another two pictures and I finally had the confidence to shoot at an aperture lower than f32 because I wanted to see stars and stars I saw. Though unfortunately I didn't really see stars for the first exposure which I shot for one hour and ten minutes uh, at f16. The clouds kind of took over and ruined it. But as for the second image which I shot for the same amount of time but this time at f12, uh, I got some stars, I got some streaks. Um, which is brilliant. So here we are, it's the final night and I took three images and y they were interesting. <laughs> I'm really happy with the last one, but the first two didn't end up quite so good. This one was a one hour and 11 minute exposure at F12 and totally got ruined by the clouds. And this one was a one hour and 40 minute exposure also at F12 that also got completely ruined by the clouds, except you could see some stars with this one. But as for the final lucky last image, it was a three hour and 20 minute exposure at F14 and I, I really, really, really like it. And this image is such a great ending to what I'd have to say was a, if you would allow, stellar cartridge. It's really the culmination of everything I learned. And the other thing that I did with this exposure, which I didn't do with any of the other exposures, was that I went to bed and set an alarm and woke up to stop the exposure rather than stay awake the whole time. It took me 16 exposures to learn that lesson, but hey, you know. Some things have to be learned the hard way. And that's it really, that's the lesson to take from this video. In photography, even after eight or it's 2021 now, nine years of experience in the field, you can make very simple, obvious mistakes because of fixed mindsets. But there is a silver lining and that is that if you persist through, you will get results. And I will keep persisting, I will keep trying. I, I wanna get some photos on this camera that at least rival Dan's images. And I will eventually make another video about astrophotography on this camera and maybe a different Polaroid camera if I'm lucky. And if you wanna be the first to see it, make sure to subscribe and click or tap on that notification bell to see, you know, this face more often. There'll be links in the description below to Dan's socials as well as bonus material to do with this video. So make sure to check that out. Also, we just passed 2000 subscribers on this channel, which is absolutely crazy. And finally, <laughs> happy new year. It's the first video of 2021. Um, may it be a great year.